In this tutorial, we're going to look at post-generation data editing. Up to now, we've been generating pieces using the make slippery chicken function, and this produces a whole piece algorithmically. However close you get to your desired piece by calling that method, you may still want to change some notes or add some ties, any number of things you might need to add to the score that can't be done algorithmically or that you think would be better done after generating the piece algorithmically. This is when you would use post-generation data editing. So the points that we're going to cover here are the concept of events versus notes and the basic format of the calls to the post-generation editing methods. And we'll look at a few examples. There are actually a lot of methods, but the examples we'll look at are change pitch, add mark to note, remove marks from note, tie, and double events, and move events. So events versus notes. An event is an individual rhythm object, which is either a note or a rest. So it will have all of the related data, for instance, duration, pitch, marks, clefts, etc. A note, in slippery chicken terms, is not actually a class all by itself, like an event is, but it's more of a conceptual object. It's a non-rest event object, so it's got pitch attached to it. Some methods in post-generation data editing count events, some count notes, but almost all of them are one-based when you're counting, rather than zero-based. So first of all, let's look at the idea of getting an event object from a bar. Here we've got a very simple mini example which creates a piece. And we don't need to look at that in detail because we've seen this kind of thing before. The thing we're interested in here is what happens when we say get event from our mini object from bar one, event one in the violin part. What we get here when we look at the data slot of that return event is an S. That's because if you look at the rhythm seek palette, there's only one rhythm sequence. And the first event in that rhythm sequence is a rest. And you can see this because S is in parentheses. But S as a rest is an event. So getting the first event of that bar will return that rest. If we look at the next example, however, it's almost exactly the same as the first example. But instead of calling get event, we call get note. And like in the first example, we're looking at the first bar and the first note. If we get the data slot of that, we now see it's an E, because we're skipping the first two rests, the 16th notes, and getting the first eighth note with a pitch. The basic usage of these post-generation data editing methods involves passing the slippery chicken object as the first argument. And this could either be a local or a global variable, whichever you prefer. The remaining arguments are generally, but not in the following order, the bar number, the player, the event or note number, and the new value. So as a first example, let's look at change pitch. We've got a mini example here, which looks like any of the others, so a very simple example. We're going to call change pitch for the third bar, the second note in the viola part, and we're going to change it to the note C sharp 4. And you can see this now in the score. The next example shows how we can add a mark to a note after generating the piece by calling make slippery chicken. We simply call the method add mark to note with the slippery chicken object as the first argument the bar number as a second, then the note number, the player that we're going to change the note for, and then the mark that we would like to add to that note, which in this case is a triple piano. You can see this also reflected in the resulting score. To remove marks from a note, which were perhaps added algorithmically, we can use the RM marks from note, and again, it's the mini slippery chicken object, the third bar, the second note, the viola part, and we're going to remove that triple piano, which was actually added through the mark slot of the rhythm sequence palette.
The next example is Thai. And here we've got a very simple mini example of our slippery chicken object. And we're going to call the Thai method twice with the mini object as the first argument in both cases. First of all, we're going to tie from the first note of the second bar in the violin part into the next note. So we always specify the starting note for the tie. The second call to tie happens on the third bar, the second note of that bar, also in the violin part. And you should be able to see this in the score on your screen now also. The next method we'll look at is move events. This allows us to move events from one part vertically upwards into another part. So you can see here we've got a very simple mini again with our now familiar string trio. And we're calling move events on that mini object. And we're moving from the violin to the viola, as you can see on your screen now. Starting at bar 2, event 1. Ending at bar 3, event 1. So bear in mind we're moving events, as I said, vertically. We're not copying from one bar to another bar in the piece, but just from one bar straight into the same bar in another player. Double events is similar to move events, but instead of deleting the events in the originating part, we now actually leave them there and just have some absolute unison playing in the part we're copying to. So again, we've got our string trio here and a call to double events. And here we're copying actually from the violin part into both the viola and the cello part, as we can see by the list VA, VC. And again, as in the previous example, we're starting at bar two, event one, and ending at bar three, event one. 